He's a world-famous academic in the field of linguistics, but he's probably better known as a political dissident and long-time critic of US foreign policy. Professor Noam Chomsky has spent a lifetime highlighting injustices around the world. Well, last week he was in Ireland, where Prime Time's Robert Short caught up with him. Great powers uh, do not support human rights, except sporadically. Uh, they don't support democracy. Noam Chomsky has been an outspoken voice on human rights and foreign policy for decades. He was in Ireland last week for a series of lectures. He also recorded an interview with Primetime. I asked him first about the ongoing war in Syria. Syria is a pretty awful situation. In fact, the two sides are moving towards a, a kind of a suicidal conflict. The only plausible way out is uh, through some form of negotiations. Uh, neither side is capable of destroying the other, that's pretty clear. And pl certainly plenty of atrocities on both sides, mostly government, but it's uh, not alone. There's a big debate in Europe over whether or not uh, the Syrian opposition should be armed and whether or not a, an EU embargo on uh, arms to Syria should be lifted. Uh, what's your view on that? First of all, the opposition is being armed. Pouring arms into the area is likely to inflame conflicts, atrocities, uh, probably end up uh, helping the... I mean, when you arm a group, the arms tend to go to the best fighters, the ones who are on the front. And those happen to be uh, uh, the jihadi elements. There's problems with what's called the Middle East peace process is a process organized and run by the United States. And there can't be a serious peace process that way. The U.S. is an advocate, not a neutral observer. If there were to be a genuine peace process, it would be administered by some country that, for one thing, has a degree of international respect. Do you think that there's, there has been any change at all in the approach of the United States towards uh, Israel and uh, the Palestinian territories under President Obama? Because he was actually criticised for his approach towards uh, Israel at one point over the last uh, couple of years. Actually, under him it's gotten worse, which was totally predictable. In fact, I wrote about it in 2008 before he was even before the primaries even, just using his web page. It was pretty clear that I can give you the details if you like, but it was pretty clear that he was not going to be willing to support anything that involved Palestinian rights. And apart from some what's called soaring rhetoric, that's the term that's usually described for him, apart from the soaring rhetoric, there's been nothing except making it worse. In the case of Iran, uh, no one knows, including U.S. intelligence, whether they're trying to develop nuclear weapons. Maybe they are. A uh, general assumption is they're probably trying to develop what's called nuclear capability. That means the ability to develop a nuclear weapon if you choose to, and dozens of countries have that. Uh, the, uh, uh, so are there concrete measures you could take to avoid that, short of sanctions and war? Yeah, there are. So one possibility, for example, would be to try to renew an agreement that was reached in May 2010 uh, between Brazil, Turkey, and Iran. Uh, they agreed uh, uh, that uh, Iran would stop uranium enrichment. Uh, it would send its low enriched uranium for storage elsewhere, in fact, at Turkey. And in return, the West would provide... Uh, isotopes, what, whatever's needed for the medical reactors in Iran. That was the agreement. As soon as that agreement was reached, it was bitterly condemned by the United States. It's Obama. Um, uh, the U.S. media denounced uh, Brazil particularly for carrying this out. Uh, uh, the head of the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, Mohamed al uh, said that the U.S. is refusing to take yes for an answer. 
the U.S. is supporting uh, warlords who are not all that different from the Taliban. And uh, the question is, what are the effects of their staying there? Uh, what the effects of their staying there will probably be to prolong the conflict. Uh, is, isn't it Afghanistan, I suppose, a prime example of the difficulties of intervention? No, because there were no difficulties. The U.S. invaded Afghanistan. We know why. It was public. No secret documents needed. In early October 2011, uh, 20, 2001, uh, George Bush announced that uh, it, he, he demanded that the Taliban hand over uh, Osama bin Laden to the United States uh, for prosecution. Uh, the Taliban requested evidence. Uh, the U.S. refused to provide any evidence. Well, that was the invasion. Nothing about uh, moral concerns. Uh, but should there be? I mean, is, is Afghanistan an example of the, the, the rest of the world has a responsibility towards, towards a people where there is no... There is no state, or at least there, w there was well, no the state there when the Taliban was there. I mean, what you're saying would be true if governments of the world accepted that they have a responsibility for anything except the, their own power and uh, the, uh, powerful, the uh, demands of the powerful sectors within them.